Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So tonight our house is unusually quiet. Once a week, Kaya will go to pickleball and then also on that night, Luke is usually at practice. Liam and Noah and I will typically take that evening just to kind of hang out and spend time together. However, tonight they are very quietly and peacefully playing together upstairs. So I'm just gonna let them hang out tonight, have their brotherly bonding time. And I'm gonna take this evening just to go through the house a little bit, clean things up. I actually took a nap earlier because I was so exhausted from not getting a lot of sleep last night and when I woke up I was like kind of energetic ready to get things done so I'm going to start in our bedroom I actually never made the bed today it looks like I should climb into it right now but I'm not going to I'm gonna make it up and then once we're done here I want to go into the living room and kitchen and just do like my typical every night nighttime routine get things ready so that tomorrow I can start and be actually motivated and not feel like I'm falling behind before the day even starts so Let's go ahead and get into it. I love After Dark Clean With Me's because they are so calming and relaxing, but you also get that motivation. And I am a firm believer that a nighttime routine and actually specifically a nighttime cleaning routine is so important. I have had so many routines over the years and I feel like almost never do I skip my nighttime cleaning routine just because it really sets me up for the following day. And also it doesn't hurt that I am definitely a night owl. And so I kind of get that boost of energy a little bit later on in the day or even at night. And another reason that I love it is we just kind of get to close our home down for the day and everyone is kind of relaxing a little bit more. Maybe everyone's going to bed and it's just so peaceful and calm. And it gives me a lot of time to just kind of focus on what my mind wants to focus on or let my mind kind of wander even a little bit and it's just so relaxing to me but anyway you see me making my bed right here and I know that seems a little bit silly because literally in a couple of hours I'm going to be going to bed and crawling back into those sheets however I am a big believer that it is never too late in the day to make the bed it always feels so good to climb into a made bed and the sheets are all pulled snug and I just personally feel like I sleep better when I'm climbing into a made bed it's just more relaxing to me so even sometimes when I climb into bed late at night I will literally pull the sheets up pull the blanket up i won't obviously put all the throw pillows on but i will make all of the bedding up and then climb in it just feels so much better to me i also wanted to talk about for a moment that i am listening to a decluttering audible book and i'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the video but I am getting really into decluttering again just because like I've been saying here and there I've been feeling very overwhelmed with things and this book has been amazing so I cannot recommend it enough I'm not quite all the way through it but I'm about halfway through it and so far I feel like it's shared a lot of things that I haven't really thought about before when it comes to decluttering and so it's just feeling very beneficial to me and if you are like me and you feel like you don't have a lot of time to just sit and read a book definitely check out audible I have been using audible for years and and it's just nice because when I'm doing something like this, like my nighttime cleaning routine or making dinner at night, whatever the case may be, I can pretty much always pop in some AirPods and I can actually be listening to a book or learning something as I do whatever I'm working on. Okay, and this is like the most random thing, but these pants are the most comfortable pants ever. They are my lounge pants or the ones that I'll wear to sleep a lot. They are just from Amazon. I got them a couple of years ago and then my mom actually bought me a second pair for my birthday, I think last year, and they are just the most comfortable pants ever. They're definitely not like a walk out and about pants. They're very <laughs> kind of frumpy, I guess, looking. They're not the cutest, but they just are so comfortable to hang out in. So if you are wanting some cozy vibes, if you're wanting to just chill, I cannot recommend these pants enough. They are so, so cozy. I 
control when I make you laugh. I don't know what it is about After Dark Clean With Me's, but I feel like I cannot share one with you guys anymore without sharing some sort of mindset chat. So here is my mindset chat for today. Earlier this week, Kyle and I were talking to our boys about, you know, I don't remember what the situation was, but something wasn't going according to plan. Something wasn't making them happy. And we talked to them about how not everything that's bad or that appears bad ends up being a truly bad thing. And Kyle shared something with me that I actually haven't heard before, the burnt toast theory. And basically the way that goes is you might start making yourself breakfast in the morning and you burn your toast. And so you have to remake your toast and it adds an extra five or 10 minutes to your morning. And so obviously you don't look at your morning and think, yeah, I'm so happy I burnt my toast. However, there are a lot of times where maybe burning that toast and adding an extra five or 10 minutes to your busy morning routine saved you from a car accident or maybe it saved you from not having to run into a person that you would have gotten into an argument with i mean there is just a million different possibilities with it and i honestly can just think of so many examples right off the top of my head of things where this has been true for us this has happened to us one of the big ones that pops into my head is when we were about four months pregnant with luke we were in the military we had just moved to north carolina and we had parked our u-haul trailer with everything that we owned into the parking lot of the hotel and then the next morning we walked outside of the hotel and our u-haul was gone it was just missing and as it turns out someone had came and stolen our u-haul with everything that we owned all of our wedding gifts like all the stuff and we were over 2,000 miles away from family we were only like 20 years old i think at the time and that felt like a really bad thing had just happened but we kept positive about it. And in the end, we were able to see so many blessings that came from that. So I will share just a few of the top blessings from that. But one of the things that came from that is it made us question where we were going to live. Originally, we were planning to live in maybe a rougher area of town that we didn't really realize was as rough as it was. And we were going to be making our main priority be saving money. And instead, we ended up allocating a bit more of our budget towards our rental. And so we were able to stay in a safer area, which is definitely a good thing. It also really taught us to be very thrifty with things because we had to start from scratch. We had to get a new couch, we had to get a new bed, we had to get a dresser, like we had to buy all the things and we were on a very low budget. Kyle was brand new in the military and so he just wasn't making a lot of money at the time. And so I shopped thrift stores, I shopped Craigslist back when that was a big thing and it just kind of solidified those habits in us and I feel like that's helped us a lot over the years. And another thing is when we had Luke, Luke's car seat actually didn't fit in Kyle's old truck and so we were were able to take the little bit of insurance money that we got for the things that were stolen and we used that money as a down payment for a new truck that fit Luke's car seat. So there were just a lot of good things that came from our U-Haul being stolen and I think a lot of things that will happen has to do with how you handle those situations. If we had not been positive in that situation right in the beginning, it probably wouldn't have turned out as good because we maybe wouldn't have had our eyes open to see all those good things and we might have missed those blessings in disguise and then i also wanted to say sometimes bad things happen and you might not even realize or ever see the good things that came from that for example if you burn your toast in the morning maybe you did avoid that car accident and you'll just never know that but i think it just makes those hard things a little bit easier to handle when you have that mentality that this thing is happening for a reason so I'm going to leave that with you guys today and hopefully with whatever struggles and trials you're facing that can keep your spirits a little bit higher. So this next song that's going to play is actually a song that always reminds me of my dad who passed away unexpectedly in April of 2022. That has completely changed my life. In the last year and a half, I have grown, I have struggled, I have felt so lost, and I've also found a lot more meaning to things, and it just has continued to be such a big journey. So if you have lost someone close to you, I am sending you love, I am sending you a virtual hug, and if you haven't lost someone but you've been dealing with other trials, I am also sending you so much love. And I just want to remind you and encourage you that you will come out of this okay on the other side. It might take some time, but everything will be okay. Teach my soul to sing your song Even 
when my eyes can't see When I can't seem to carry on I know your hand is guiding me I know your hand is guiding me So come the storm, I'll still believe <laughs> And when it seems I'm at the end I don't know what I believe Through the cloud I see your hand Reaching down to guide me You're always reaching down to guide me Cause I am yours and I am free I have to compose myself a little bit. That song always gets me feeling a lot of things. These trials that we face in life are very difficult and you know sometimes they take a lot longer to get through but they end up molding us and we become who we are because of the things that we faced and the things that we've gone through and one of the things that I've really learned through this and over the last year and a half is actually just to be way more compassionate for people in not knowing what someone is going through. I remember so clearly flying up to Montana uh, the day after I found out. I remember watching people in the airport. I remember a lady arguing with someone about a flight being delayed. I remember seeing someone trying to figure out, you know, where they were sitting on the plane. And there were just a lot of things going on around me. And I thought to myself, nobody around me even knows what has just happened or what I'm dealing with. And at that same moment, I realized I have no idea what anyone else around me is going through. And it has just been a blessing to be able to, you know, share that compassion with people and just understand that there is a lot of things that people are facing that we have no idea about. And so just make sure you always smile, always be kind to others because you just don't know what they're handling. And I think it's so good if we can always try to be, you know, something bright and something happy for someone else, especially when they are struggling with things. Somewhat recently, I have actually began to smile here and there when I think of memories of my dad. And instead of just immediately crying, it's made me really happy to think of that. I feel like life is such a beautiful trial and I'm just learning to try to do better today than I did the day before and I'm really trying to find the important things in life and kind of letting go of the rest. So that's definitely an ongoing thing but I feel like I just want to do my best to enjoy this life fully. I feel like I have a long long list of things that I would tell my younger self if I could but let me know what is the one piece of advice that you would tell your younger self if you could. Something I've started doing lately with Kyle is actually talking about our highs and lows for the day. And it's been really good to 
kind of make a focus, like acknowledge your lows, but also celebrate your highs. So I thought that would be fun to do with you guys today. So let me know what has been some of your highs and lows this week. For me, I will start with my low because I want to end on a high note. That's just kind of how I am. So one of my lows this week is I've actually been struggling to sleep. I have not been sleeping really well. I've kind of been feeling a bit overwhelmed with things and just pretty emotional, I guess. So that's something that I hope that I can work on this coming week. But a high this week was it was actually my 34th birthday. It was on the 17th, so this last Tuesday, and it was such a great day. Very simple, you know, like birthdays as an adult are very anticlimactic, but they are still good. I got to spend the day with Kyle and the boys, and it was just all the things that I wanted. And also, other than feeling like I need to give a little bit more focus to some anti-aging skincare, I feel like I've been loving my 30s and I don't feel sad every time I get a little bit older. Right, this is so random and you guys know I just have random thoughts that takes me a while to get through and kind of make my decision but I've actually had an idea of painting our lights above our island a you know kind of vintage gold look just to add a little bit of warmth and then if we did that I would maybe paint the hardware on our cabinets gold just to kind of make it feel cohesive and tie it all together. But I feel like that could add a lot of warmth to the kitchen, but I would love to get your opinion. I haven't really mixed metals a lot in the past. Typically, if I have one metal in a room, I'll kind of stick with that throughout, but I've been seeing a lot more of mixing metals and I think it can look really pretty. So let me know what your thoughts on that are. Oh my gosh, sometimes like in those last clips, I swear I just look so sad or upset, but that I can assure you is my focused face. That's just how I look when I am, you know, really focused on something and there I was just listening to my audiobook. Again, it was still just that decluttering one, but one of the things that I learned in that audiobook or that I've learned so far is that you should start decluttering in the open spaces. So, a lot of times I go to those closed spaces, the ones hidden back behind things like my closet even, but instead she said that you should begin decluttering in the front of your house where everybody sees because that way you're going to see it every single day and it's just going to encourage you to continue decluttering. And another thing that she talked about is to actually declutter those spaces over and over again because it really won't take a lot of time, but then you continue to have that motivation. There's a lot that I'll kind of get into and I'll go over that stuff a lot more in depth in Monday's video but I am so excited because I went through and decluttered like the whole front half of our house and I did it in a different way because I had learned new techniques and new tips. And so, yeah, I'll talk about that a lot more in depth in Monday's video, but I just cannot wait to share it all with you guys. I feel like this book is amazing. Here, I'm just taking a minute to refill our mud water and I wanted to talk to you guys about this really quick because 
Again, every time I share mud water or I show it in my videos, I get a ton of questions. It's definitely something weird that not a lot of people know about. So mud water is actually a coffee replacement. Now I don't drink coffee, but I really do enjoy mud water and so does Kyle. And basically what it is, do not let this scare you away, but it is made from mushrooms. So it has a lot of health benefits, but you do not taste the mushrooms at all. I hate mushrooms, I'm not a fan, but I drink this basically every single day. So it does have the mushrooms in there, but then for flavor, it has cacao and it also has a ton of spices. So it really just tastes like a very warm drink. It's really, really yummy, especially if you can add a little bit of creamer to kind of take a little bit of that bitterness out. My favorite is the brown sugar oat creamer. That stuff is so good. But if you are interested in trying out mud water, I will have a link for it down below. I believe it saves you, I don't know if it's like 10% or $10 or something. So anyway, I'll put that down below if you want to check it out. We really like it. We've been drinking it for about two years probably. Now I know I'm sharing my nighttime cleaning routine and this is typically, you know, what I kind of do generally. However, I don't always mop my floors. I would say I usually don't mop my floors, but I will choose to mop my floors sometimes. And when I do, I will a lot of times try to do that at night just because I get a little bit more time to do that. But tonight I actually decided to use my spin mop without the clean water tank just to try it out and see, cause I know this is how the Oceder spin mops used to be before they came out with their new version. Now I will say, I think I like the feeling of the clean water tank. It is cool that you can kind of do both options with their new bucket. And I will say it was just easier to fill up, easier to manage, you know, not having that clean water tank. So I didn't put any cleaner into the bucket itself, but I'm just using that almond scented floor cleaner from Method. I love this stuff so much. It smells amazing and it just makes your house smell so good. If you like the scent, I don't know. I love this scent. It's the same as like the wood cleaner that I spray on my table, but it's incredible. All right, you guys, it is 11, 11, make a wish or know that all is well, whatever you kind of go for. I am so excited. You guys, I am so excited for Monday's video. I cannot wait to share it with you guys. It's going to give you so much motivation and I'm really excited because it gives me a lot of motivation when I film and share those kind of videos with you guys. We are decluttering a ton of stuff and it feels so good and so much more peaceful to be in our home in the areas that I decluttered and I can't wait to just continue that. I think I'm going to make like a little mini series of decluttering. Hopefully I'll get it all done before the holidays, but we'll kind of see where life takes us. We are going to declutter at the speed of life, which does not mean go fast. It just means we are going to declutter as we can and do things in a realistic way. So anyway, I hope that you guys really enjoyed today's video. I am so beyond grateful that you're here with me. If you are new here or you haven't subscribed yet, I would really love if you hit that subscribe button and join the family. Family. We have a lot of fun here. We do a lot of fun things and I just try to share a lot of inspiration and motivation with you guys. So hopefully that translates to you, but I hope you have an amazing rest of the day and I will see you right back here on Monday. Bye guys.